Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So, good morning if you are in the US, good evening if you are in the Philippines, good afternoon if you are some, uh, somewhere in the world right now that is afternoon. Okay, so in episode 17, I talked about five reasons why you should marry a Filipina. Actually, that was my husband's idea. <laughs> my original thought was the five things you have to know about Filipinas or Filipinos in general. So I only mentioned five and I think that it wasn't enough because after that, I have some friends messaging me about additional stuff <laughs> and like people who knew me like, oh, they can so relate, but yeah, they also had their input, but some of them are shy probably to comment. So they just messaged me some of their thoughts. So I thought of doing a live stream about five more things you have to know. No, some more, not five. Cause you know, along this chat, if you have something to share, please do so. Okay. So yeah, let me recap the five things I mentioned last time. Okay, I have it here. Okay, hey, look at my shirt, it's Snorlax. <laughs> okay, anyway, so I talked about us loving rice so much, like without rice, we feel like it's not a meal, it's only a snack. Uh, how we want the shoes to stay outside, like do not bring your shoes inside the house because Filipinos don't like that in general, or Asians actually, not just Filipinos, because our thought process would be your shoes have been everywhere and then you'll take them inside, especially if it's carpeted, like, come on. You know, again, that's just like, my husband has learned to do that by now and I'm pretty glad that he does that. So, and the third is like how we use our mouth in pointing, like, that's not, that's not us asking for a kiss. <laughs> That's us like, mm, it's over there, okay? Um, four is how much we love pictures or maybe not all Filipinas, but a lot of Filipinos I know, like, you know, you have to take at least 10 pictures and we'll only choose one, okay? And last is the communication because remember, English is only our second language. So sometimes there will be some miscommunications and like, if I say, mm -mm, that means yes, and my husband would think of that as no, okay? So I thought of, well, I'm sure there are some more things that viewers would want to share, and some have shared with me via chat, and yeah. So let's get started about some more things you have to know about Filipinos, okay? So. Let me just wait for some more people to come in. Okay, so the first thing is, well, right now it is September 6th. It's the Burr month. In the Philippines, guys, the countdown has already started. The countdown for the Christmas has started now. And if you watch TV shows or news, they have started the countdown and some people would even start taking out their Christmas decors and stuff like that. And my husband probably would not agree because, you know, I know that here in the US, you don't do that until after what? Thanksgiving. But yeah, in the Philippines, as soon as September hits, Okay, that is already the start of our Christmas season. We're counting down and yeah, well, I don't know what's happening right now because of all this COVID thing. So it might actually be different, you know, but yeah, countdown starts this September. Okay. Um, Christmas is the longest season for us. We started in September and usually the decors will be up until after the three kings if i'm not mistaken or mistaken omg <laughs> i'm i'm from a, two catholic schools and i can't even remember when the three kings usually is but yeah it's it goes 
for a long period of time. And our Christmas is different because towards my birthday, that is December 16th, we start going to church. And they call that the Simbangabe or the Misa de Gallo. And at that time, we usually go to church from December 16th to the 25th. And they say that if you complete those, you are entitled to a wish. And, well, I'm not a very religious person, really. I have tried, I think I did try going to, like, those Misa de Gallo or Simbonga Bear, but I have not been successful in completing them. Uh, I usually would go on my birthday for the first one, but it's very difficult to, like, complete all those nights because it's from... 16, 17, 18 until the 25th. And it's not your normal Sunday mass where you, you know, you go at 9 o'clock in the morning or you go in the evening. Usually Simbanga Bay will be at, what, 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock, right? But it's really nice to go in Simbanga Bay because, you know, there are this certain Filipino food like putamumbong and bibingka that are, you know, you would, Rem make you remember that it's like, oh, it's Christmas season. It just gives that feeling of love, I guess, about the Christmas season, how fun it is. I guess especially if you're a child or a kid, you know, Christmas will probably be one of your favorite holidays because, oh, this is, again, something new. During Christmas, a lot of children would get money, okay? Like, here, I know kids would get gifts yeah we do get gifts as well in the philippines but if you go from on the 25th after the mass you go to your relatives you go manupo or you bless do that and then they will give you money and the money is the crisp new one so it's like nice okay my husband asked what is your favorite holiday huh <sighs> i would like to say christmas was my favorite holiday but not really because as i've mentioned kids or children will usually get money but growing up my parents kind of had it good and some relatives will not give us money because they'll say that Oh, your your parents are doing good already, or something like that. So we didn't. I didn't really get that much money growing up during Christmas. So, and I don't like being weekend. Like, uh, we will have to wake up to go early to the church. So, I didn't like. I like the food, and my parents would usually give, give me money. But I think my favorite holiday back then oh and i didn't like christmas because christmas is so near my birthday that people would usually just give me one gift for christmas and my birthday <laughs> i'm baba so shallow huh um it's i think it's the halloween or the all souls day so that's another different thing here and in the U here and in the philippines so november 1 Halloween in the Philippines where we do Halloween parties and trick and trick or treat now but growing up our idea of November 1 or the Halloween is going to the cemetery to visit the dead and you know um, gather with our relatives and just you know spend the day there to you know commemorate our departed loved ones and it's also like a mini reunion where you have food. And I think that was my favorite holiday because kids back then will, you know, we'll be lighting candles for um, our departed loved ones. And then you'll start collecting this candle and then you'll form like a wax ball. And you can sell that, I think. I, I remember you can sell it. I mean, you it's like a few pesos, so less than a dollar or what. But it was fun. Like, you go from one one 
um, gravestone to another and just try to get these candles. And, you know, you do that to your cousins and friends. So that was when you're, like, young, like, not even a teenager. And then during my teens, that's when you, like, get to hang out with your friends or see them. Because, of course, it's usually a small town and everybody will be there. It's going to be very traffic. It's going to be, like, chaotic. But it's fun because that's when you see people you haven't seen for a long time. Can you show your retainer? Yeah, <laughs> my retainer. Okay, hi. Okay, so I think that was my favorite holiday. Okay, and then that's one, two, I guess. So because the Halloween and the Christmas, so these are like two different holidays that we celebrate in different ways. So, oh, another thing. Filipinos usually do not open gifts right when you give it to them, right? Like, I don't know. Usually when you give us gifts, we'll just say, take it, say thank you. And during birthdays, there will be a part where the birthday celebrant will open the gift, gifts. But we don't really like opening them in front of the person or people who give it to us but when i got here like my husband or my mother-in-law would give me gifts and they're like oh open it i'm like oh i should open it i didn't know that you know because i don't know there's just something different right or is it just us that don't really open gifts like i think it's it's getting more common now that we do open gifts so yeah it's also something new i guess okay next one i have a list so i don't forget and if you have something that you want to share about the filipino culture that you think is different from others or you just feel is like unique to us please do so by live chatting i don't know what you mean by can you show your retainer like uh, retainer tis retainer what do you mean okay anyway um second is again about food. So aside from we like rice, there might be some food that we like that doesn't necessarily, you know, resonates with other culture, especially with Americans or people who have lived like here in the U.S. One example, this was shared by a uh, past student of mine that was, we like dried fish and some weird smelling food. So... <laughs> I have not tried cooking tuyo or dried squid or whatever here because I'm not sure if my husband will be like into it. And I know it has so much salt and sodium and you know, it's not really that good for your diet. So, And I've kind of been craving dried squid, but I have not found where to buy. Maybe there's, a, there's one in the Asian store and I have just got it, not seen it. But yeah, we like those kind of food or, or the shrimp paste when you cook that or bagoong that does not smell that good either. But to us, it smells okay because we grew up like eating that. But Americans or other nationalities may not find or may find that weird. Some of the stuff that I have made my husband try uh, would be balot. <laughs> he ate it wrong though. He ate the whole thing. <laughs> in one go so i think it was difficult for him to eat it and he says he didn't like it i would like it if he would give it another try because i think it's an acquired taste you know it's not that bad especially if you only eat the yellow part but there's no fun in that so he did it the whole thing i also have made him it it's actually exactly two years ago because i saw in facebook oh, yeah no three years ago when he went to the Philippines and tried Adidas. We call it Adidas. It's the chicken feet. <laughs> he didn't like it, he said. But it's actually good. And it's a, it's a, it's a social. On, um, babe, when I say social, it's like um, not the street food. Like it's kind of fancy. Okay. It's the social na Adidas. I, I took him to Tim Ho, Tim Ho Wang, right? That's where he had his first Adidas. So come on, you did not even try the legit thing. Well, that's a legit thing, cause like it's an Asian, like it's an Asian food, right? So Tim Ho Wan was where he Tim Ho Wan. Hmm? Oh my God, I can't remember. 
you know that that restaurant that's where he had his chicken fit he didn't like it did you like it babe i think you did right 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 so guys how about you what are other food that you think are uh you know unique to us well another thing we love our sauce okay this was actually shared by a friend of mine april from las vegas she was like yeah we especially her she said personally okay her her okay april said that she cannot like eat food without any sauce so usually there will be a specific sauce for anything okay so i guess that's true like my husband sometimes finds it weird that I look for ketchup or sauce or like vinegar when I eat something. And then he was like, did you know that I read somewhere that if you use sauce and whatever, like it's a kind of disrespectful to the chef or to the one who cooked it because it means that, you know, the food they made lack taste but i don't know it's just being filipino we have our mang tomas we have our banana ketchup uh we have all this kind of different vinegar that we use when we eat so to us it's not being disrespectful it's just how we eat and sometimes our palate just looks for it i guess so you what are your favorite sauces i usually like ketchup <laughs> I like ketchup. I like mang Um I like vinegar with chili. Oh, that's so good. Okay, anyway. So, all food. Okay, so the next one is also shared by April, and it's like about food. Avocado. Okay, in the Philippines, avocado is usually mixed with like milk and sugar or or condensed milk if you don't want to use the uh, milk and the normal milk and sugar then put it in the fridge and we kind of make it like an ice cream or a dessert so that's basically our idea of how to use avocado but here in the united states of course it's very different you can see avocado in the toast and we use it as a like a dip for guacamole and a lot of different stuff but in the Philippines, our idea of avocado or growing up, you know, I only eat avocado once in a while. It's not really my thing, but now I love guacamole, so I eat it a lot. So, yeah, something different. It's again food. The next one is again about food. <laughs> okay, donuts. Okay, this is another thing that is very different because... I remember there was a time that I was craving for donuts and then I told my husband, oh, I want donuts. And then he was like, babe, it's like five o'clock in the evening or afternoon. And he's like, why do you want donut as th at this time? And I was like, why? It's dessert. Because in the Philippines, Krispy Kreme's, Jayco, Dunkin' Donuts, all those donut places are open the whole day. And then he told me that Donuts are usually a breakfast food. And I was like, really? Donuts for breakfast? For us, donuts is more like of a dessert than a meal. <laughs> and I would know, like, in the Philippines, I would never eat donut for breakfast. Except, I, well, I have a friend, Jazz. She likes eating donuts, so I do see her eat donut for breakfast. But for us, yeah, Ross said donuts donuts are a whole day food. Exactly. Like, we eat it any time of the day, and we don't make it our main meal. It's not a meal. It's not a breakfast breakfast meal for us. It's just a dessert, right? Donuts are dessert, and I, well, I'm not a sweet tooth, so I, I do not, like, crave that for breakfast. I usually, for us, breakfast will consist of rice eggs and whatever meat if it's beef we call that tapsilog if it's like uh sausage long silog if it's fish usually we use the milk fish that's gonna be bang silog so that's our idea of breakfast not donuts well we can eat donut after we eat the rice and the egg and whatever um, the protein that comes along with it but we will not only eat donuts for breakfast so yeah my husband would like get donuts for breakfast and coffee but I'm just like no that's not breakfast that's dessert right right do you guys agree with me 
do you like eating donuts for breakfast or do you also consider donuts as like a dessert or something i don't know okay so that's the yes for breakfast <laughs> are we getting donuts after this babe <laughs> yeah okay so that is number five um six we are very driven like i i think all the dunkin donuts went out of business really well I, back in the philippines i was no longer a big fan of dunkin donuts i like jayco it's i think it's a singaporean brand right jayco uh second will be crispy creams but sometimes crispy creams would be a little bit too sweet for my tasting but what's your favorite donut place guys okay if, if you're gonna watch this later just comment down below what is your favorite donut place but yeah i love jayco's donuts i think my husband has not tried it <laughs> yes jayco we bonded over that when irene and i went to manila yeah i i like i really like jayco i like crispy creams but sometimes it's like a little too sweet for me Hmm. There are other donut places that I like, but those two are my favorite. Dunkin' Donut is okay, I guess. Growing up, I like Dunkin' Donut over Mr. Donut. I don't know if anybody's familiar with those donuts, but yeah, I miss Jayco. Can't they open here? What? <laughs> okay. Anyway, so I was talking about how driven Filipinos or Filipinas are like or maybe it's just my set of friends when we set our eye on a certain goal we just do it like we have to achieve it and we don't just like wait around to you know for things to happen and sometimes it gets us really restless or anxious because we just we just want to achieve results quick and fast and maybe it's because of this upbringing like there is this fable about one tamad one tamad is like being lazy like those are some of the things like growing up they would like oh you should not be lazy you should be doing this and that so that's a problem too with me i end up like oh i can i feel guilty whenever i spend a day just being lazy like not doing anything and it still gets into me so i'm still working on that i'm still working on you know telling myself that hey it's okay to rest it's okay to like just chill you know because i've always thought that you know oh time is precious you should not waste it you should always like be doing something productive which sometimes is not good because everybody needs to rest you need to breathe a little you need to give yourself time to recover and this and that so yeah we're very very driven i think yeah it's just crazy when i think about it like for me before getting four to six hours of sleep is more than enough but when i met my husband he's like no i, mean, I need eight hours of sleep out of the philippines it's just just crazy all right like uh, i guess i don't know i don't know how to word it but how about you guys what are some more things about filipinas that a lot of people may not know oh i i there's one more in my list so if you have other things that you have to share please do so okay the last well the last one in my list right now maybe i could think of something else is the filipino time <laughs> we have this thing called filipino time basically what it means is if we are meeting up or we're like gonna try to set a date for something we sometimes ask if it's filipino time or american time mainly because if it's filipino time don't expect us to be on time 
will probably be late. And, 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 wait, we have an excuse there, okay? Because, as I've mentioned before, the traffic in the Philippines is crazy, ridiculous, horrible, whatever term you want to use or adjective to describe it. It's just very impossible to really get there on time because sometimes you can leave, like, hours earlier and be stuck in traffic haha <laughs> filipino time my gosh we are the worst yeah <laughs> yeah so when we say filipino time we try we really try to be on time but it's just the traffic is horrible especially if you live in major cities like manila cebu's traffic is also bad especially during the rush hours and ross told me that the traffic in uh, Davao has also gotten worse, right? Like before, when I when I still go there, it wasn't that bad. Like it's usually just when you're going to the airport, you can get stuck in traffic. I remember that before leaving the Philippines, one of my last flights, like in Cebu or Davao, it's the it, it's just ridiculous. Espe don't talk about. Don't, Manila is just a whole different ball game as well when it comes to traffic. So, if you have a flight, I don't know if it was just it's just me, but we tried to get there like two hours earlier. Like, an example, if our flight is at three o'clock, we try to be there at one o'clock. So basically, at eleven o'clock, we're getting ready. At twelve o'clock will kind of be on our way to the airport if it is just like a few miles away because we get stuck in traffic so we're we're gonna be in the airport two hours earlier because we know that you know traffic is so unpredictable and even if i leave that early if it suddenly rained or there was an accident or whatever we could get stuck in traffic for like three hours so we're hoping that little that time it's not little like that few hours ahead could avoid us you know missing the flight so most of that time we are very early in our flights or going to the airport because we're so used to the traffic being so bad that we give it like two hours minimum to just get stuck in traffic and that's something that i have to like and learn here because my husband and I would travel and I'd be like hey we have to go and he's just gonna be like we usually get there like four to five minutes before our flight and it's like we'll be fine we're checked in and everything and I'm like are you sure are you sure because for those who do not know me when I was in the Philippines I would fly a lot when I say a lot that's as much as three flights in a day I'm not a flight stewardess I'm not an FA I go to different parts of the country to teach so there was a time that i was i would have lunch in i'm in manila by breakfast and then fly to cebu by lunch and then by evening i'll be in iloilo or something like that so three flights in a day to us i think the least number of flights i took when i was still there would be like three flights in a in a month okay that's the list that never happened though i usually fly every week so the most is three places in a day and like once a week i would go out of town and fly for work so i'm kind of used to that routine i i like i have gotten used to the traffic and everything before i would just like get there on time but there was a there was a one time that I got left behind or the gate closed two minutes after, uh, before I got there and my flights are paid for by the company but since it was my fault that you know I got there two minutes late I have to pay for a new plane ticket so since then <laughs> I learned my lesson I always just get there on time uh, like earlier I would spend like 
at least an hour and a half in the airport just drinking coffee or just relaxing. So I don't like a cup of coffee or food in the airport is definitely cheaper than a new plane ticket. So I'll just be like, oh, I'll stay here and just relax or meet up with my friend Sam. That's what we would do or meet up with, you know, people. Uh, the jet setter life. I remember there was a time you f- flew, you just flew home from somewhere to get new set of clothes before flying to Davao. Yeah. Yeah, that was my life before because usually my work will end at five o'clock wherever I am in the Philippines and then I'll have a flight around eight o'clock. So if it was, if I was like somewhere south, I'll considering no delayed flights because flights in the Philippines, local flights are almost always delayed. (laughs) So if I have an eight o'clock flight right after teaching, I will go directly to the airport to get there on time. But most of the time, this flight will also be delayed. So if not delayed, I'll get to Manila like 10 o'clock and getting an Uber, or you know going back to my place would be like an hour at least so i'll get there like 12 o'clock and during really busy season the only thing that i could do at 12 o'clock would be to unpack and then pack again because sometimes i would have to fly right then like four o'clock in the morning like i would have a four o'clock in the morning flight so i could take a one hour nap or two hours at most and then leave again and then i'd have to teach at yeah, like if my flight is four o'clock i'll get to wherever like six o'clock sometimes they'd let me nap like i'd have like an hour nap again and then by eight o'clock i'll start teaching again so that was a very busy life it was it is fun like my students know i enjoy it like even if i just came in from somewhere and you know i just flew in check in the hotel and go right teaching i still try to give my best to have enough energy to last me the eight hours so i usually just drink a lot of caffeine energy drinks i would have coffee in one hand and then i have like another energy drink just to like have enough energy to teach that whole eight hours But yeah, that was my life. It's crazy. So yeah, I apologize for those times that I am late because even in teaching, I mean, I am sometimes late. It's Filipino time. It's just sometimes it's not even our choice. Like at my best friend's wedding, uh, KD, Sam and I left. Their wedding was around one o'clock or two o'clock. We left my place at 11 30 or 12 o'clock so there was like a two hour or even a three hour leeway for us to get to qc just manila to qc which if you google maps it by miles is not that far but we were literally stuck in traffic for three hours so we got there the ceremony is almost done and like we don't need it it just happens it's it's it, 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 it is crazy so when my husband and i are planning like our wedding i was like oh can should we put like 30 minutes in advance like if the ceremony will start at i think we did five o'clock could we write 4 30 and he's like why would you do that because filipinos will be late and we did have filipinos in our wedding because i have friends from California who flew. I have friends from the Philippines who flew to be with us. I was like, we have to like put it 30 minutes. My cousin is in Texas, so she was also there. So I was like, let's put 30 minutes in advance in the invitations and it's like, baby, no, you, you can't do that. Cause my friends, my family will be there on time. Like you just can't do 30 minutes in advance in invitations. but. In the Filipino culture, that is very common, right? Like, I remember my sister's wedding. We put it 30 minutes advance and still people are late. Because it's just, ah. I I don't know. Guests were just really chill. And I know it's, it's a bad habit 
if I may say, because I know that, you know, when you meet up with people and set an appointment, like, it is their time that you have to respect it. But Filipinos have just gotten used to it that we let it pass. Like, we don't really get mad. I I think it's different during professional setup. And we, we really try, but if here the leeway time for waiting for someone or, you know, it's still o- considered to be okay to be late is what, five minutes? I think five minutes here is okay. Five to ten minutes, they say. In the Philippines, usually it's uh, 30 minutes to two hours of waiting time. I know that is ridiculous, like two hours. That's why, that is why my friends and I, Usually, we just meet up at my place because at least, you know, it's just relaxing, chilling. We don't really have like, uh, we don't, we don't really like stay in a restaurant and have to wait for someone because that will not work because my friends are just always late as well. They know that. So, yeah. Filipino time but now with online classes it's just different like I I am always on time and I guess like being here and being with my husband my husband is always on time so I am kind of get I am getting better with that and it's good like when you google map something and it says 10 or 15 minutes you definitely get get there in 10 to 15 minutes and like in the philippines if you use google maps or Waze, and you're driving and it says 30 minutes don't believe it (laughs) do not believe it you'll try driving get there and it will just adjust longer and longer okay so yeah i guess those are the things that are different in our culture uh other things will include other attitude wise i'm not sure about the younger generation now but when i was growing up you're not allowed to talk back or answer like if it's someone older than you you're not supposed to like say what you think like if if they're trying to they're mad at you or you did something that they think isn't right sometimes you just have to accept it as fact that oh i was wrong i'm sorry like we respect the elderly i'm not saying that you know talking back doesn't mean or talking back means you don't respect them because that's not true okay like i learned now here living here that just you know saying speaking out your mind isn't bad yes we were not allowed to defend ourselves <laughs> ross I, I like the term you use yeah we're not allowed to defend ourselves like wow why was it like that because like i i i'm actually amused amused amazed i don't know which is the better term to use when my husband and his mom will be talking and they're just having like this conversation and I'm like, oh, like, then I tell my husband, like, why do you talk to your mom like that? And I was just like, what? There's nothing wrong. I'm just telling her how I see things. And with Filipinos, like, no, we can't. Like, there are certain things that we just can't say to elderly people or like to our parents or anyone who's older. Like, yeah. Be, it's like being polite I don't know it's weird right we're not allowed to defend ourselves <laughs> yeah you're automatically wrong if you're like the younger person it sucks <laughs> right? and they will start telling you oh you're still young you still don't know a lot about the world or like oh you're just saying that because you're young and this and that and it sucks because for me age does not equate to intelligence or maturity you know so i think our generation would have to learn from that we would have to start you know being more open to the opinion of the younger people because it's just so messed up i mean it is 
nice to see. It is a polite to see uh, this and that, but it's just not right. I feel like, you know, there is really this certain gap or, or thing. Or is it just me growing up? Or, or do you guys agree with me? Like, we were never really allowed to, like, speak our minds. Like, you're there's even a song, right? Uh, the it's called anak anak is like the children in if I translate it, and basically the lyrics will be batang bata ka pa at akala mo ang dami mo ng alam or something like that. I'll translate that in English. That means you're still so young and you think you know a lot. So basically, it's telling the younger generation that like, hey, you don't know a lot of things. And yeah, we know that. Uh, like when I was younger, I knew that. I didn't know a lot of things, but it doesn't mean that I cannot think, right? Like, yeah, I'm young, but I have brains. I have, I have my opinions. So for some reason back then, it, it, it's deemed inappropriate, impolite, and like rude to talk back or speak your mind. And I think that is just so backward thinking and i guess some people will disagree with me some people will say oh of course they're you know they're older they're more mature they're more experienced in life you have to listen to them but i beg to disagree because you know even if you're younger you have gone through a lot of things that some of these people might not have gone through and the world is continuously changing we are changing so i think we should embrace that change like we should start including the youth in conversations and like before growing up they will be like oh no it's 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 the oldies or you know the adults talking children should not join in which i guess is okay but like if it includes me and what i want to do with my life i guess that I should have a say in it, right? Um, another thing is, oh, here's another new thing that, uh, you know, something new to me. In the Philippines, we're common, like we usually say ma'am or sir, right? Like anywhere you go, you'll hear people calling you ma'am or sir. Like even now that I don't teach, well, I teach online, but I have friends or like colleagues who were my students before and since they met me as like their lecturer professor or instructor they still call me mom dad instead of just calling me dad you know and it they're even like near my age like just a few years younger maybe because i started teaching like right after i got out of you know um right after i got licensed so the first batch that i taught ross is one of them yeah you're just one of the first batch our age difference will be negligible yes <laughs> feeling <laughs> feeling talaga. okay so our age difference is kind of negligible and wh while i was teaching of course everybody would call me you know ma'am like that's common or if you are somewhere in um, the Visayas region, they don't call, they don't use the word ma'am, but use miss. Okay, so miss that. So I am kind of used to that. Like, even if they're my friends already, like, you know, really good friends. It's, it's just something we've gotten used to. And even I, like, with my, with my uh, professors, I still call them ma'am or sir, like, it's just how we are like me haha ha. i've never thought of calling you not mom dad i know right like it's just weird it's, it's it's just like common to us like if we have if you were someone like our professor or our teacher like it, it's just even at work like it's just not me being like a lecturer or a teacher like even at work uh what i do like an internship or like what i did my yeah internship in the hospital or in the manufacturing well more of the hospital like everybody in the pharmacy or even the community will just call you ma'am like and then your name regardless of who you are there you know 
and it's just weird to not call like have that term ma'am or sir before but here it's just different i'm just like oh i like i told my husband like so you just call your boss by your by their first name like hey like jonathan or like mike or whatever or pat like he's like yeah <laughs> like so when i started working here like i just don't know how to like i'm trying like because at work like we just call each other by name and in the philippines it's like a no-no it's not it's not that it's a no-no i guess it's just common to us right like i guess that's why some think that you are like very polite because we have these terms and I, honestly i really don't mind like if they call me mom dad miss dad ate dad uh although sometimes it minds me if you call me ate and you look older than me excuse me they're just kidding <laughs> i think the only thing that bothers me when someone calls me ate dad is like ah uh, i don't feel like i'm that old <laughs> but i guess i'm past my 30s so it's common now but yeah and we also have like certain terms like when talking to elderly people we use the word po po ano po it's uh, all those in the recent years that has had its jejemon effect or jologs effect because people are like just trying to be cute and like oh yes po huh kumain ka na po ba like ah but before the, the origin of the word po is whenever you talk to an older person you have to use the word po as a sign of respect so yeah we're a very polite respectful culture that i know sometimes it's weird because oh <laughs> i just remembered another thing so my husband was like of course his friends with some of my friends in facebook and we'll see you know we'll see pictures of like how filipinos celebrate and he's like i just find it weird because i know that filipinos are very not very but kind of conservative with a lot of things but during a bachelorette party or a bridal party or you know a bridal shower why is it that i would see <laughs> cakes with those designs out there you know like why like your culture is very it's kind of conservative but you have all this cakes shaped as you know what i mean you know you you guys i because this is youtube so you know okay okay fine they're they're shaped like penis or vaginas you know in cakes or cupcakes and then you'll have all those decors during a bridal shower or a bachelorette party and you will have those like same penis forever whatever like in decors and he's just like how how is it like that i don't know <laughs> i don't know like yeah it's still a taboo sometimes to talk about sex and all those stuff but we have weird sense of humor i guess like i think that's also one of the things that i'm adjusting to because things that i find funny or to me is like just humor sometimes my husband just finds it like no that's not funny that's rude or something you know like i don't know in our culture that's funny <laughs> but yeah maybe you're right because like ah oh, there is one thing i hate and i think is a toxic filipino trait is when you haven't seen someone for a long time and they see you for the first time and they'll be like oh tumaba ka babe uh uh non-filipino viewers the meaning of oh tumaba ka oh you've gotten fat like that's the first thing they tell you the first minute they see you after not seeing you for what months like seriously and for them for a lot of filipinos who say that mindlessly is just a way of greeting and sometimes it's even for them they think that they're like flattering you because you're like 
oh, you look like you don't have any problems because you 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 look healthy is what they call it. But it's like, no, please do not ever comment about someone's weight. It's just very rude. I mean, my sister has uh, always been sensitive about that. I have never been sensitive about my weight, mainly because I grew up, you know, kind of skinny <laughs> to the point of being anorexic. So I, I never got bothered when people would just tell me like, oh, you got fat or whatever. But there was a time that I did gain weight. Uh, I think the highest weight I have ever been in was like 130 pounds. And people start saying me and like oh you gained weight and in my head but not really you gained weight they'll be like oh you got fat not gained weight you got fat and in my head like yeah of course i'll get i'll gain weight i'm like i was anorexic i was skin and bones and and i don't think that's healthy and then they'll just say that to you and it makes you feel bad ross said this is mostly coming from long distance relatives yeah Relatives that you haven't seen in a long time and are not even fit. Like, come on. <laughs> like, like, girl, we're not even close. What are you talking about? Yeah, oh yeah, I meant distant relatives. Yeah, that's true. Like, people that you're not even close to. And mind you, the person saying this can even be sometimes fatter than you. Like, oh, look who's talking. You're telling me I'm fat? Like, at least I'm not ugly. I'm just kidding. We have to be positive here. But it just really annoys me because people don't know how this affects us. Usually it's, I'm sorry, usually it's the older generation who does this. It's our, I would like to believe that our generation has gotten better when it comes to being more sensitive about these things like commenting on someone's weight whether they gained weight or not is just very rude most of the time it's gained weight because it just sucks <laughs> like why can't they just say oh you're looking happy or oh you're looking great or if you have nothing nice to say if you haven't seen me in a long time just shut your mouth like you don't have to comment that I've gotten fat. Like, I, I told my students before, because when you are reviewing for the board exam, you see, it's, that's also very different in the Philippines and here. Reviewing for the board exam in the Philippines is a serious matter. <laughs> and you usually will gain weight because you stay up late, you snack, so you st stay up, you drink lots of caffeine, get your sugar high, sometimes just to be up and studying so a lot of board exam takers will gain weight which I tell my students before is like it's fine your focus really right now is to study but yeah I know you have to try to keep healthy but it's just difficult you have to do you and you will see a lot of like after the board exam I gained weight almost everybody did and then you see relatives or distant relative or somebody you haven't seen in a long time and they'll just be like you you got fat i told my students to answer it like this they'll be like oh yeah because i have money now to buy food <laughs> or like oh because i have a lot of money to buy delicious food and so, uh, someone once told me like oh you just answer them like yeah get a sign of prosperity because <laughs> you have money to buy food but it's just really annoying. We sometimes say the wrong things and even ask the wrong questions. And sometimes we don't mean it. Like Filipinos don't usually mean it. It's just that in our culture, it's like it has been long accepted. Like that the phrase that, Uy, tumabaka. In English, that means, oh, you've gotten fat. Like, I know some will not mean harm, but to the person receiving it, that just sucks, right? Like, uh, that's a toxic trait. And hopefully we try and learn and change that, but it would take 
quite a while and if we do go back to the Philippines when you see me please don't tell me I've gotten fat <laughs> I know I did I know I've gained weight here in the United States because <laughs> the food the serving is just different it's that's another different it's a lot you aren't fat oh thanks baby but i'm telling you if i go back to the philippines now and other people will see me a lot will just be like oh you're gonna fat and i'm like yeah thanks it sucks but that's how they greet people <laughs> okay so yeah that is it for today do you, if you guys have any more things you want to share about the filipino culture and traits just comment it down below and i hope to see you again next sunday and have a good night in the philippines good morning here in the united states because my viewers are mostly in the u.s and the philippines um, as you could see in my analytics please don't forget to Follow me on Instagram, that's Wonder Dad, and like my page only the Dad in Facebook. And I'll see you again next time. Bye guys.